Usually, we don't get to face much issues regarding electricity in our Prayagraj city, but it's summer season and we can't predict anything. Although we all are having inverters in our homes and houses, but I still remember that when I was in 4th standard, I was crying just one night before because my inverter project wasn't working. So guys, watch this video till the end because I'm going to tell you that how these videos are scamming us and also I'm going to build one inverter out of just $2. So let's begin. This is a laptop's battery and I'm having lots of them in my house. Don't throw it guys, it's very useful. And by tearing it down we get lots of 18650 batteries. Although it was very time taking but I really did it. After obtaining all of them just test them by using a multimeter and usually only one or two of them are seen to be damaged. And so these are some of the cells which I've obtained from my dead batteries and also I've used some of them in my drone. After researching a lot I found this circuit board and it's very useful guys. Its name is LM2596. I have got two of them and its length is about 4.5 cm. In this buck converter we can give an input up to 40 volts and then we can adjust the output using that potentiometer which is located on the top. Then I'll be using some HDMR boards for my inverter but you can also use normal plywood here. And now I'm soldering some wires on my buck converter. Then I've took a set of SMD LEDs and you can also obtain this from old LED bulbs and then set your buck converter on 12 volts or either 10 volts is also appropriate. And now I'm making some necessary holes for my switch, my LED etc. Then I've took the diffuser of an LED bulb and then I'm making some holes using an soldering iron. Then I'm gonna tie everything using zip ties. These videos are totally fake because the motors that we get in our market don't even have the efficiency of 95% and I've also tried this in my real life. So it's totally impossible to generate at least 1% of electricity from them. Even I've tried to produce electricity from my 12 volt dynamo motor and it just produced 8 volts. So it's just impossible to charge your phone at least. I just wanna say that energy can neither be generated nor can be destroyed. But you can make the best conservation of electricity from this video. And here I'm tying all my battery compartments with the help of some zip ties. After cutting down the unwanted parts, I've connected all my wires in series connection. So as you can all see here I'm having 30.75 volts currently but it can be expanded up to 33.6 volts. Then I'm connecting one of the buck converters to the LED and then I'll connect another one to my USB charging port. I have added one switch also to switch it on or off.
here i realized that the length of my wire wasn't sufficient so i had to cut it once again and then i have connected it again the socket which i am gonna add here is for variable output and it's gonna be very useful guys Now it's time to solder all our temporary connections. I have also collected some of the power adapters and these are few more. You can also use their USB female jack for reducing the cost but I'm gonna use one purchased one you can use that one also. And then we have to just connect the female and negative wire to the buck converters female and negative wires. Make sure that you have set 5 volts on your buck converter because most of the android phones support only 5 volt of charging. And here's a chart you can look for your phone also. After applying some tape, I always like to compress it by heating it down. Here I am soldering my both buck converters parallelly to the battery and one of them is for USB charging and another one is for LED bulb and the variable output supply. I am adding one switch also for the main power supply. Remember that our buck converter can only be at a temperature up to 80 degrees celsius and to prevent it from severe heat we must use heat sink. And the aluminium rod which I am using here is generally used in the fall ceiling of our houses. So it also costed me zero dollars. With the help of some both sided tape I am sticking my buck converter here and then I will be using some hot glue also for more satisfaction. So as you can all see there's one LED bulb then there's a switch for that and there's one socket also which has one potentiometer and there's one female USB jack also for charging a phone. You can adjust your LED's voltage using that potentiometer and that is parallelly connected to our variable power supply socket. So you can use any type of small instrument like LED or motor but don't dare to insert your charger over there for that purpose we are having the USB port also. Obviously I can't use this much big socket so I'm tearing it down. And now I'm connecting my LED's power supply parallelly to my variable power supply socket. Now I'm sticking all my corners using hot glue. To conserve more power, I am adding 3 solar panels in series connection and then I will stick it on the roof of my inverter. Here I am connecting one 4007 diode to maintain the flow of the current in single direction. And you can get this diode very easily in the circuit of any charger or any type of electronic circuit.
guys our inverter com power bank is almost ready so haven't you like this video just like it and then share your opinions in the comments below i have made few holes also to maintain proper heat sink and finally guys our inverter com power bank is ready now in this we are having one led bulb then we are having one usb port for charging our phone and also we are having one socket for variable power supply i'll be using this for my experiments like using one dc motor or led or anything that we want so let's test it quickly so here i've turned on the switch for main power supply and then i've got my charger with me so here i have plugged in my charger at this point most of the people show their phone after switching it off but i'm not going to do this because dc motor always provides direct current and it's very harmful for our phone so our phone directly notifies us that we should unplug that bullshit charger but as we are using one buck converter here so we'll definitely get the constant power supply of 5 volts and 2 amps and the proof is just in front of you And as you can see the variable power supply is also working perfectly. So was it very worth it for your school project? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are having some doubts you can also ask me in the comments below and you can like this video, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be back with more awesome ideas. And that was it for today.